and welcome back. The previous video, we put our EVE 280 amp hour cells uh, into the solar system, which is currently powering the house as we speak. But the previous cells in the bank, if you remember, two of the 16 strings were going to decommission, but we had two 16 cell strings in the bottom which were these 100 amp hour, again, lithium iron phosphate batteries that we got from the electric par car parts company. You see one of them here. Now these are very nice aluminum case cells meant for electric vehicles use. Um, uh, when we come back for the follow-up video, I'll have the stats for you, but they are capable of a very high discharge and charge rate. Um, and as you can see, the casing they come in, when you group them together, it allows you a bit more separation between positive and negative to, to alleviate um, accidental shorts, things of that nature. But without this being a, um, you know, a video on these particular batteries, if you remember, one of the things we wanted to do was capacity test this. So these were in service for right at 10 months before they were removed. So they've had roughly about 300 cycles on them. They were used every day, rain or shine. If it rained outside, we did run the house partially off of the battery bank and then recovered that charge when the sun came back out again. So again, we're looking at roughly about 300 cycles, generally anywhere between lowering it to an 80% state of charge, maybe as low as a 70% state of charge. And before we decommissioned this battery bank, we dropped the battery bank deliberately to about a 50% stated charge for two reasons. One, so we weren't dealing with as much potentially stored energy to, in case something should happen, it wouldn't be as bad as it could be if they were fully charged. And the other reason being that we knew we were gonna take these batteries out of service and some of these we were gonna keep around for a while to do some testing before they got turned into something else. So we didn't want to store them at their 100% rate of capacity. Uh, these cells seem to be, and at least what is stipulated by the manufacturer, if you're gonna store them for a while, they suggest that you actually don't store them at a fairly high state of charge. So again, two reasons. One, to eliminate the possibility of having issues when we were doing the decommission, and two, because we knew, we, again, we were going to uh, store these for a bit. But what I figured we would do is take one of these, again, very nice cells and do a charge test on it, tell us a couple of things. One, the Batrium software says the bank as a whole, now keep in mind it was four strings of 16 cells, a mixture of different types of cells with different types of capacities. So when the BMS told us we were at 50% state of charge when we shut it all down, is this cell truly at a 50% state of charge? So we're gonna do a charge on it, see what it will take to get it up to 3.65 volts. Once that's complete, then we'll do a discharge test on it to kind of show us what the capacity is out of it. I'd like to see that after 300 cycles, have we lost capacity, any at all? If we have, how much? Maybe we haven't. And we'll do the same thing to a uh, to one of the cells out of the two previous strings as well. Actually, we'll do this to all the cells. We'll, we'll so we'll put out a series of four videos. We'll grab one random cell like we did with this one. We'll grab a cell out of packs two, three, and four of the old setup, and we'll do a very similar test. And to be fair, when we charge this up and do the first discharge test. We'll then do another complete discharge and another complete charge cycle. So we'll cycle this battery two times and kind of see what our results are. I'm gonna set you down for a second so I can finish getting my gloves on. Um, okay, now that we've got our, our gloves on, both our hands at this point, as well as our safety glasses, one of the first things that I'm going to do is just do a resistance test on this battery. Because I would like to see what our internal resistance is. So it looks like we are at point 
six one milliohms, as you can see there, three point two nine volts. So point six one milliohms, and that is with the battery at its current state of charge. And what I will do is I will look up the specs on this battery and pull them down and see what it was originally. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to get this, our, our tester, plugged in, the tester you've seen in previous videos. And then we're going to start the, we're going to do a charge on it and a discharge, then another discharge and charge. And once we have all that information, we'll bring you back. I'll get the specs for this battery pulled up by then and uh, I'll see what the internal resistance of these batteries were stated to be when they were new. But we'll get all that done and we'll bring you back. And welcome back. In the previous video, we started testing one of the cells from the original four strings that made up the battery bank that drove the house. Uh, in the previous video, we started a charge cycle on this cell charged up to 3.65 volts using a 40 amp rate and the results is what you see here we ended up putting 57.02 amp hours of capacity into this 100 amp hour cell uh, which tells me pretty pretty closely we're at about a 50 percent not obviously not an exact 50 percent state of charge but pretty close to a 50 percent state of charge in that cell, uh, which then backs up what the BMS was saying that the overall pack health was when we shut the original system down. Now, take that with a grain of salt, and we will test this, but you also have to remember that the original house pack was made up of two strings of 16, which were these type cells, a string of 16, which was CALB, 180 amp hour prismatics, and a string of TAFEL 145 amp hours, if I remember correctly. So a mix of different cells, a mix of strings, a mix of capacities, a mix of internal resistances that were all kind of parallel together. So it'll be interesting when we test those cells, if we see about this same result, if we do see a close to 50% capacity that we drain the bank down to when we shut the whole bank down, or what the deviation will, will kind of look like. Now, I did look up the specs on these cells as promised in the previous video. The internal resistance test we did in the previous video, if you remember, we got about 0 0.61, 0 0.62 milliohms. The specs for this battery show factory new, it should be one milliohm. So we're actually below our rated specs for the internal resistance. Now, the specs also list that this cell is capable of up to 3,000 cycles, of which it's only had 300. So I'm really hoping that this discharge test will show that we still have the original capacity, maybe hopefully even then, just a bit more than 100. But we'll run the discharge test here. We'll bring it back and see what we get. And then we will run a complete uh, charge from zero on up and then run another discharge test just to see if the ending capacity on both discharge tests will stay close to each other. Meaning we only charged up to 50%, then ran a discharge. Do we see the same if we do a complete discharge and another recharge going from 0% to 100 and then back down to zero again? So, and again, just to be fair, to give it a couple of discharge cycles uh, and not just trying to use one discharge cycle and go, oh, that's my capacity. So interesting to see if we get the same amount of discharge uh, between the two or if there's any deviation. If there is, you know, how big that deviation might be. Again, since they're, they were purchased new and they're rated for 3,000 cycles, I'm hoping that we see pretty much the same capacity on both discharge tests, but we, we will see. And with that, We'll let you go for now. We're gonna run this first uh, discharge test and we'll bring you back. And welcome back. As promised, we just finished our discharge test of this cell. 
and as you can see there we stopped at about uh, our target voltage of 2.5 volts just shy of uh, two hours and uh, looks like two hours and 40 minutes and we pulled 106.85 amp hours uh, with the capacity which is you know to me a great result off of a 100 amp hour battery so we're still getting above its rated capacity at least in this test so what we're going to do now is that we're going to immediately do a charge on this and then another discharge and uh, we'll save this graph and compare it to the one we're getting ready to do and just see if it changes at all um, mainly out of curiosity so we'll get that done and we'll bring it back and welcome back we just got done doing the um, charge and immediately following the discharge testing once again of this 100 amp hour um, cell and if we go back on the screen here we can see that hopefully you can see that in that chart but step one is where we did the uh, charging up to uh, 3.65 volts and you see we can put 106.98 amp hours into the cell and then we did the discharge test immediately following so we discharged with constant current again 40 amps and we took 107 looks like 0 0.09 amp hours out of that cell so in two cases in which we did a charge and discharge test this cell still is providing over its rated capacity um, after about 10 months worth of use so like, once again it's had roughly about 300 cycles in this case out of its rated 3000 and 10 months into this you can see that we're still pulling more than rated capacity out of this cell these are very nice cells let me get you the front of it that's the company that produces them. Uh, the electric uh, car parts company, which I'll have a link in the description uh, to these cells, uh, sells them. Uh, they list them uh, by the name of Fortune. So these are Fortune 100 amp hour cells. Very good cells, as you can see, very, very beefy uh, terminals. Um, you can actually put quite a bit of torque on these terminals. Uh, the bolts they give you, uh, they, they also give you bus bars as well, but the bolts they give you have the nylon insert in them to help prevent them coming loose from vibration. So as I stated before, these are meant for EV applications, but they work beautifully well in a solar setup. I just wish that they made these cells in larger capacity than 100 amp hours. Uh, because uh, at the stage of the game that we're in where we're running an entire house and multiple air conditioners you know it, we're at the point now now that we've been doing solar for a number of years we need larger capacity cells you know like the 280 amp hour cell that you see there now if these were available in 280 amp hours or bigger uh, i would definitely be buying some of these in a heartbeat like i said these are these are awesome uh, you'll notice they have these little blue plastic um, top and bottom pieces as well. And what you can do to them, you'll see that there's a hole that goes through them. You can stack them together and put a piece of threaded rod through it and thread them in place. And that will hold them together as one unit. It also provides spacing between the cells so there's plenty of airflow. And you can once again see uh, that also in this top piece here uh, not to say that it prevents you from doing it but it provides a nice barrier in between here uh, it prevents you easily from being able to touch this terminal and this terminal together when they're assembled in a pack because this raised area they give you that's right above where the vent is kind of also helps helps you to prohibit from inadvertently touching this terminal and this terminal together so as you can also see that when you have multiple of these hooked together, it gives you plenty of room in these little channels here on the side to also run things such as balance leads, which if you go back and you look at the our earlier videos where 
the video is titled adding 200 amp hours to the existing bank you'll see where we originally set these up and the long mons which one used to be attached here we put on the side and then we just tuck the excess wiring inside these channels and then snap the little blue cap that comes with each cell on it so by when it was so when it was all said and done all you really saw was the long mon it's it's daisy chain communication to cable over to the next long mon and then everything was nice and uh, covered and concealed from the top of the battery so like i said before and uh, again not to make this a, a video uh, you know a sales video for these cells but they are very very nice cells but uh, we'll go ahead and conclude that test we'll put a little bit of a charge in this just so this cell doesn't set you know for a long period of time in a zero state of charge uh, but we'll conclude this video testing this cell and then what we'll do next is we'll grab uh, one of a cell out of one of the other two types of manufacturers either the black one that you saw on the bank or the taller blue um, prismatic case cell and we'll test it next in a very similar fashion we'll so we'll do a charge and then we'll do a discharge test we'll do another charge another discharge and kind of just see if we see the same type of results that we're seeing with uh, that we see with this cell here um, other than that that will conclude it for this video uh, I thank you for watching and, and look for the remaining testing videos to come soon Thank you.